Good evening and welcome to the Gospel Roundtable. So glad you're joining with us tonight. I encourage you to join us in the comments section, leave a prayer request, maybe a praise report. God has done something special in your life this week. Well, I have good news and bad news. Well, I'll start with the bad news, I guess. It was on Monday. I spent about an hour recording with David Musselman, uh, the piano recording artist, uh, concert pianist that was with us uh, two weeks ago. And I had tested all the microphones and everything, and the uh, video came out perfect, but the audio did not. And so tonight, he is not joining with me. Um, good news is... Um, I sent a new microphone home with him, and hopefully that will help him connect with us, and we will have him join with us from his home in Lynchburg, Virginia. That is bad news, and that is not going to stop us. And let me just say, when bad things happen, when difficult things come in your life, when it doesn't happen as you expect it to happen, we can get angry, we can get discouraged, we can quit. Or we can keep a smile on our face and say, God, you've got something else planned for us. In January, I purchased a new book, and it's called Daring Devotions, a 31-day journey with those who lived God's promises. And it was my intention to, along the way, share stories of missionaries. And that's what this devotion book is all about missionary stories, and many of them go to the first missionaries in their country. Well, I haven't shared any this year. We've had so many missionaries join us on the Gospel Roundtable, um, but tonight we're going to go in the book, what they call Day 13, or the story of Robert Morrison. Robert Morrison is the first missionary, um, English missionary, to China. He lived from 1782 to 1834. He lived in England, and his father was a boot tree maker. And so that's what he was going to be. Now, that job is no longer, but he decided that would not be what God had for him. After he got saved, he decided to become a missionary. He went to school to become a missionary, studied the Chinese language, but from England, you could not go directly to China. The East India Company had all the routes, and no English person could go to be a missionary in China. So what did he do instead? He comes to America. And America, he's in New York, and his friend was with him and tells a story how that he came to a merchant and began to talk to a merchant in April 1807 and ask if he would take him to Canton, China. And the merchant tried to discourage him, told him about the storms on the Atlantic, the peril that's around the Cape Horn of Africa, um, the possibilities of pirates in the Indian Ocean, and told him, once you get to China, the Chinese people don't want anything to do with a white person. Um, it is against um, their culture to talk with any white person. And then the only person that's really allowed to be there because of the East Indian Trade Company is those that are doing trade. So once you get there, you're not going to be allowed to be a missionary. Morrison's friend who accompanied, accompanied him here to America gives this account with the merchant before he leaves America. When business matters were all arranged, the merchant turned to him from his desk and with a sardonic grin, addressed Mr. Morrison and said, And so, Mr. Morrison, do you really expect that you will make an impression upon the idolatry of the great Chinese empire? No, sir, said Mr. Morrison. I expect God will. Mr. Morrison had a biblical truth, a Bible verse that was his life's verse. Zechariah chapter number four and verse number six. It says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. What a great passage for those who, like Mr. Morrison, face a daunting task against unsurmountable odds 
but are going to serve Christ anyways. This is written here in Zechariah. Um, the Jews are in Babylon, and uh, Babylon, they've been cap, um, in captive in the Babylonian uh, Empire, and they are now being able to go back to their land. And once they get there, the first job is to rebuild the temple. Let's do that first before we build our homes, before, before we build the walls. Let us build the temple to the Lord. Let us worship Him. You see, uh, when they were taken away, uh, the temple and the city was destroyed. The walls were destroyed. The uh, houses were destroyed. And the temple was completely flattened. And the first task was huge. They had to remove all the rubble. These huge boulders that made up the temple had to be removed. And they had to go back to the foundation before they could even begin doing this. Why? The odds are too great. The task is too hard. The job is just impossible. So God sent the prophets Haggai and Zechariah to encourage Israel to obey and serve God despite the obstacles that were before them. And they say this verse, not by might. This is not going to happen by your physical strength. And that's a, for us today. The work that we do for Christ is not going to be done through our physical strength and not by power. Your abilities will never get God's work done. It's great that God has given us abilities. He has empowered us to serve him, but it's not by our power. First Corinthians chapter number four, verse number seven says it this way. Um, but we have this treasure in earthen in vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Paul, who was a chief, he was an intellectual of the intellectuals. He knew the scriptures. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He said, I had to come to the place where I can't do this on myself. And he humbled himself and God used him greatly. His name was changed from Saul to Paul. And he tells us, it's not by my might. The verse says, but by the Spirit there in Zechariah. Whose Spirit? It's the Spirit of the Lord. And in fact, as we study um, this coming Sunday, the life of Joseph, what he is able to do is because the Holy Spirit is upon him. And Pharaoh recognized that. It says, I want to appoint you to be number two in the land because you have God's Spirit upon you. Here in Zechariah chapter number six, they identify who this Spirit is in verse number four, in verse number six, this God is all seeing. He is all encompassing. He is all powerful. God reminds them 76 times in the book of Haggai and Zechariah that he is the Lord of hosts. It's God who encourages us. He is the God of heaven and of earth. This task that you are doing may seem impossible, but the Lord of hosts is with you. And the children of Israel, 520 BC, before Jesus came to this earth. He says, Be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts, according to the word that I um, coveted with you when you came out of Egypt. So by my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. Haggai 2, verses 4 and 5. We must rely on God's spirit to give us the ability to do the work. Did they listen? Did they do that? Well, sadly, the children of Israel started this in, impossible task. But every time there were those that came up against them, they got discouraged, they got distracted, went to work on their own homes instead. And so for 15 years, they got the foundation ready, but they did not finish the task. It took them uh, 15 years that it laid in rubble that they had to come back. Finally, they come together and they do establish. Ezra helps them and the temple is rebuilt. And then we know that Nehemiah comes and a very short time, the wall is built around the city of Jerusalem, all making way for Jesus Christ to come back as our Messiah. Haggai and Zechariah encourage the people. I hope we don't waste 15 years of our life getting discouraged, distracted, because 
nothing is going our way. It's not happening the way we want to. Um, things aren't moving as we think they should. Mr. Morrison, when he got to China, the merchant was correct. The Chinese did not want to hear him. The East Indian uh, uh, India Company said that he could not stay and be a missionary. So he became a translator for them. He could not work full time as a missionary. He had to share his time. Uh, when he went to talk to the people, they would not listen to him because of the dynasty. So what did he do? Did he give up? Did he go back to England and says, this isn't for me? Throw up his hands? No. He took the Bible and took his skills and he became the first person to translate the New Testament and then the Old Testament into the Chinese language. And we think so much and we're so Happy, you've heard the name William Tyndall because he translates the Bible into English so that we have a Bible today. Martin Luther translates the Bible into German. Others translate it into France. All throughout Europe, the Bible begins to be translated. And here, it is the first time it's translated into the Chinese people. The Chinese people were not very receptive. Very few came to know, know Christ because of the work of Robert Morrison. All the things that he did seemed to have no real value, but his work did not go unhindered. Later on, um, Hudson Taylor is going to come and have a great work in China. He's going to have a Bible that is ready so that he can give to the people of China. Why? Because one person didn't give up when they said it was impossible. William Morrison. He paved the way for thousands of missionaries later on. And today, although they're tearing down churches, if it has a cross on the building, they tear the cross off. We read about it in our news today. Um, it may have a bell. Um, they are anti-God, anti-Christianity in China today. Does that mean that there are no Christians in China? No, oh, far from it. The church is, we would say, underground. The church meets secretly, maybe outside, maybe in someone's home. And they can do that because the gospel was brought to them. They have a Bible in their own language. Today, there is a Chinese union. These um, Chinese Christians today can come together and from outside, others help them. Why? Because Morrison gave his life for these people. You and I can do something great for Jesus Christ. We have missionaries, Greg Lyons or maybe Luke Lyons, come on and share with us how that hundreds, thousands of young people are coming to know Christ in the Philippines. But maybe in China, it's one or two, and it definitely was only one or two for missionary Morrison, but he didn't give up. So whether the numbers are great or small, we need to continue our work. And I want to encourage you today that you and I are missionaries. Just as we speak with our missionaries around the world, we are to be missionaries here at home. Have you taken a gospel track and shared it with someone this week? Uh, have you? Um, uh, last week, uh, we had... Um, uh, Charles Stanley on, and he left a few gospel tracts with me because he had been giving them out, and he says, here, I'm going to give you these to give out. Something he does every single day. We talked about how to uh, share the gospel with the police and pray for the police and fire in our um, first responders. That's so important, but we're missionaries too. Our neighbors need to have um, the gospel. We need to share the gospel with them and tell them the gospel. We need to let others around us know the gospel. I encourage you this week to tell someone about Jesus Christ and be a missionary, not in China, although we may support missionaries that go to China. We're not a missionary in Germany, although we may support missionaries in Germany or Mexico or the Philippines, but we are missionaries here at home taking the gospel to those around us. We're not lazy here at home. We're sharing the gospel here at home. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to have a word of prayer. God bless you. And join me next week, and we'll uh, interview a new missionary and see what God is doing through our mission work around the world. 
Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that there are great stories of missionaries who um, have taken the gospel, who currently we give and of what you have given to us so that missionaries today can take the gospel around the world. But we also know it is our personal responsibility to tell others about Jesus Christ. May we not say it's someone else's responsibility. May we not um, be ones that, like there in Jerusalem for 15 years, they got the foundations ready, but they didn't complete the walls. Um, it's not by might. It's not by our power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. How can I share the gospel? It's because of the Holy Spirit. And so today, will your Holy Spirit guide me to someone to share the gospel? I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're here in Phoenix on Saturday morning at 8 a.m., the men get together. We'll pray, have a good time of fellowship and breakfast. Sunday morning, 9 a.m., uh, we begin our services here at Thomas Road Baptist Church and encourage you to be with us. God bless you.